Good morning, and welcome to HCTV. I'm Rob Miller, your host, and we're at St. John's Mercy to discuss the unique challenges of doing construction and renovation in an occupied healthcare environment, and the precautions that must be taken to ensure the safety of our patients and staff. We've stepped into a conference room where a team of healthcare construction professionals has gathered for orientation. I'd like to introduce you to the facility manager, Bill Johnson. Now, he's just finishing up his safety orientation for construction workers. Bill, could I interrupt you for just a minute? Absolutely, Rob. Hang on just a sec, guys. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Now, Bill, can you tell us the steps that you take before you start a new project and why this orientation is so important. Absolutely, Rob. Thanks again for coming out to our facility today. My pleasure. There are several major concerns we have about our patients. Let's talk about the top four. First, many of the patients in our hospital are particularly susceptible to infections. And if workers don't take the proper precautions, their actions could cause a patient to get an infection. The second thing we want to do is protect everyone on our campus and in our buildings from physical risks. Things like a patient falling or even a fire in the building. Additionally, patients come to a hospital seeking an environment that promotes healing. Noise and vibration can keep a patient from resting and can in fact have a very serious impact on their getting well. Our final concern is that we pre-plan all of our work to limit mistakes so that vital systems serving patient care areas are not unexpectedly taken out of service. So you require that all contractors who come to work here learn about and follow these rules, which can help prevent something bad from happening to patients, visitors, staff. That's exactly right. Well, I like the overview. Now, can we drill down just a bit and uh, maybe come up with some specifics, some details? Absolutely. Let me just uh, let these guys go. Hang sure. on a sec. Thanks again, guys. Thanks for coming in this morning. See you on the job site. As we mentioned, the first concern is keeping a patient from getting an infection while in the hospital. The last thing you would want to do is complicate a patient's medical situation by exposing them to dust or airborne particulates that can cause harm or death. So this is why you take so many precautions, but, but, but can you tell us what some of those precautions actually are? Well, Rob, there's a staff person at the hospital who is responsible for preventing infections, the infection control professional. That person and a committee of folks, including the facility manager and department managers, conduct a risk assessment during the early planning process. This identifies the risks associated with the project and also the plans to reduce them. I guess with the hospital being a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week operation, there never really is a good time to schedule some activities. The contractor is truly a part of healthcare today. Now, could you walk us through some of the items on this risk assessment and show us exactly what you look for? We work hard to make sure that construction activities are not spreading any dust or debris outside the job site. For example, everyone is required to clean their feet on carpets or mats, which are provided at the construction access points. These mats are cleaned frequently to make sure we do not track dirt and dust in their other areas of the hospital. It's also important to make sure that all the debris removed from the site is in trash dumpsters with tight-fitting lids or sealed to prevent dust from spreading. If we can't fit debris under the lid, we will use a sheet to cover the dumpster. These dumpsters must be wiped down prior to leaving the job site. We install a tightly fitting safety barrier around our construction site to help keep any dust from escaping into a patient care environment. One of the most important ways of keeping dust from leaving the job site is to make sure there is always a negative pressure relationship between the construction site and the hospital's occupied areas. Wow, it sounds like a big job, keeping dust and debris out of patient care areas. <laughs> Absolutely. That's why I'm continuously reminding everyone that today, they are part of the health care effort in this facility. 
Each year, there are more than 90,000 patient deaths from healthcare-associated infections across the country. About 5,000 of those deaths happen because of construction, renovation, and maintenance activities. So I'm sure there must be a lot of other precautions that you take to protect patients. Oh, absolutely. We also have designated debris removal routes through the facility to make sure we avoid critical patient areas. We also designate elevators to prevent any possibility of any construction activity from affecting our patients. The negative pressure in the job site is monitored and contractors should know how to tell if a construction site is negative. Now, I know on construction projects there are a lot of products, equipment, and activities that create fumes and odors. How do you know that you're successful at managing these risks? Whenever possible, we require the contractor to use low off-gassing products, such as cold applied roofing or paint which has minimal odors, to help eliminate fumes. It is crucial that contractors are aware of where intakes are located and plan activities so that diesel fumes and exhaust don't get sucked into the air intakes. Well, it sounds as though you're doing everything in your power to make sure the job site activities stay separated from patient areas. You know, I imagine that patients and their family members are often upset, they're worried, and not always thinking clearly when they're visiting a hospital. We have to make sure that we do everything possible to prevent potential tripping hazards and the blocking of corridors near our construction sites. Roof access doors and hatches are to be locked and secured at all times. Construction areas are clearly labeled for authorized personnel only. They are also secured, especially during off hours when work is not being performed in the site. Bill, do you have any concerns about projects outside the building? Oh, of course. We're constantly monitoring streets and sidewalks, make sure they're free of debris and construction traffic. Well, it seems like during construction, you know, there could be an increased risk of, of, of fire in a hospital. I, I know that has to be a concern since most patients can't exit the building by themselves. No, yeah, that's true, Rob. Hospitals are designed and built based on the assumption that in the event of a fire, the building will not be evacuated. The building has a series of compartments that help contain a fire and smoke. <laughs> kind of sounds like how a submarine is designed to keep a, a leak uh, contained. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly it. We identify the hospital's existing fire and smoke barriers before we begin work. Any penetration through these barriers needs to be temporarily sealed at the end of the shift to maintain the integrity of the existing fire or smoke compartment in the facility. You have to remember, in healthcare, we only evacuate patients as a last resort. So being able to move them horizontally to a safe smoke compartment is very important. And I assume that you really never block open a door in one of these fire or, or, or smoke barriers. Oh, that's exactly right. These doors are required to close automatically in an emergency. So we are careful to tell construction workers not to block them open or park carts or materials where it will keep the door from closing in an emergency. Also, contractors can never store anything in stairwells. And I'm sure your staff also takes special precautions when working on the sprinkler or the fire alarm system. Construction workers should never shut off or disable a fire alarm system or sprinkler system without approval from the facility staff. There are extra precautions that we have to take to ensure the buildings are properly protected. Well, let me ask you this, Bill. How do you handle security in such a busy place and with many of the construction workers coming from the local community? How do you maintain patient confidentiality? <laughs> All construction personnel entering the facility have to be oriented to the security policies of the organization. They are assigned badges, stickers, or some other source of identification. The construction site is secured and locked during off hours, and security adds the sites to the regular rounds. In weekly construction safety meetings, personnel are instructed to not share any information about patients they see in the hospital or hear about through the grapevine. The patient has a legal right to privacy. Well, it seems that there's plenty of work in a hospital for a facility manager, especially given that all the items we've discussed are regulated by numerous local, state, and federal agencies. Oh, yeah. These inspections happen periodically, and they're not always announced. So the hospital has to be constantly prepared, and this includes the construction sites. 
it's almost impossible to prevent all noise. Sometimes we have to schedule noisier activities that cannot be avoided, just like any disruption, so that staff and patients are aware of this disruption and can prepare for them. When working in a patient care area, we make sure all of our contractors' carts, gang boxes, and trash dumpsters are quiet when being moved and in good repair. And I assume that by vibration, we're talking about an issue that causes problems in and of itself. Absolutely. Vibration can affect certain medical procedures, such as surgery, laboratory tests, and it has a profound negative effect on babies. Now, Bill, I know there's a lot of very expensive and state-of-the-art equipment inside the hospital. How do you make sure that when working around this equipment, the equipment and the workers are safe? Well, Rob, before any construction workers enter areas with MRI, X-ray, linear accelerators, CTs, and hot labs, we have a meeting with the contractors and departments to make sure we know all the precautions that should be taken. There are significant risks associated with radiation exposure, strong magnetic fields, and chemical exposures in the hospital. These areas, such as the labs, radiology, nuclear medicine, emergency departments, and cancer centers, just to name a few, can be hazardous areas for untrained personnel. What should the construction worker do if he or she finds you know, something spilled and they don't know what it is? Uh, construction workers should never clean up an unidentified spill. If they have any doubt of what has been spilled, they should contact their supervisors. It seems that there are so many systems in a hospital that really are critical for taking care of patients. It can't be compared to, to building a restaurant or, or an industrial complex where you can simply you know, shut down a system or two for hours uh, to work on them. We never disrupt any system in the hospital without approval from the facility, no matter how minor the outage may seem. Patient lives depend on these systems, and the hospital has to take all the proper precautions before shutting off any system, even the water. Only the trained hospital staff or staff designee has the authority. It's important that we never block electrical panels, medical gas valves, fire extinguishers, fire alarm pole stations, or any other critical electrical or mechanical devices in the corridors, as these devices need to be easily accessible in emergencies. Well, as you can see, there is a lot of work to managing risk and doing construction in an existing hospital. A construction worker's action could contribute to a medical mistake or create a physical risk for a patient, a healthcare staff member, a visitor, or one of your fellow workers. Remember to pay attention and consider your actions carefully while working in a healthcare setting. The work that you do and the safety precautions you take will be a critical part of taking care of patients. Their life and well-being is in your hands. Thank you for taking the time to listen and participate in this orientation. And remember, today, you are healthcare. I'm Rob Miller, and we'll see you next time.